This is a question where many of you will just automatically know the right answer because you understand fundamentally how equations like this are built. And that's great. You should try to memorize that. It's going to come up in lots of places and it's a good piece of information to know. But if you're a little confused, we have a strategy that we can use that's really, really helpful, right? We know that the overall strategy for math is to plug points into equations. Plug points into equations. Now here it's obvious from the start that we have equations. That's what the answer choices are. But we don't really have points, at least not obvious ones. And maybe this is drifting into the idea of arithmetize, where when we don't have values, we make up our own. And we can kind of do that here because the story is so clear about what's happening, right? The number of bacteria in a liquid medium doubles every day. There are, let me highlight this, 44,000 bacteria at the start of the observation. So that's a point, right? Because the T represents the number of days after the start. So when we have no days past at the zero point, the starting point, we know that there are supposed to be 44,000 bacteria. Now, if we plug that point into the equation, we're going to have a problem with choices A and B. Because if we raised either of these things to the zero, that 44,000 is going to become a one, right? So the, the, the choice A basically becomes one half times one, and choice B becomes two times one. So neither of those is going to give us what we want, which is the 44,000 that we have as our y coordinate. So this is this is how plug points into equations works, right? We take a point, we put it into an equation, we see if it produces the result that we want. If we put in a number for x, we should get out the number we expect for y. That's not happening here. It doesn't matter that we had to make up the points. It's still how the story describes what's happening. So it's, it's a valid way to think about this and to test those equations. Now, if I did the same thing in C and D, this point 0, 44,000 would work. Uh, it would work in both. So I could do two things. I can now just think about the, the only difference between those choices. Do I need a one half or do I need a two? And maybe many of you just kind of think, oh, well, doubling means you're multiplying by two. So yeah, it's probably the two, right? So choice D, and, and that is the answer. But let's you know make sure we understand why, because we could also pick a point, right? If it doubles every day, after one day has passed, then 88,000 bacteria should be there. Right? But if we did that point in choice C, we'd have 44,000 times 1 half to the first. Well, 1 half to the first is just 1 half, so this would actually get me a value of 22,000. So that's no good. Whereas here, we'd have 44,000 times 2, which again is just what we did, right? So 88,000. So look, in a nutshell, you should understand how exponential equations work, that the starting value of an exponential equation appears kind of outside of these parentheses, away from the exponent. That's just part of how they're built. Um, but if you're ever unsure, uh, especially as you get through the test and you know that traps are kind of lurking there, use the story to come up with some points that you can test in those equations. Let your mind stop having to think about it and let the numbers do the thinking for you. If you see the equation kind of work or not work, you can very confidently pick the answer or get rid of it. So it's a very valuable uh, strategy throughout the entire SAT, but especially in exponentials where our brains are just kind of not really that great at thinking about them.